Sean Diddy Combs is a name synonymous with success, but is trailed by controversies, from the mysterious deaths of people like Coolio and Notorious Big, to feuds with Mace, and disturbing allegations of abuse against Cassie and other exes. Recently, 50 Cent, in a shocking revelation during a candid interview, accused Diddy of sacrificing fellow celebrities for fame's allure. Join us as we explore the gripping details as 50 Cent opens up about how Diddy sacrificed them for fame and see what goes behind the curtain. 50 Cent's racks up against Diddy. In the glitzy world of hip-hop, where success and power go hand in hand, clashes between artists are bound to happen. But the feud between 50 Cent and Diddy is one for the history books. To understand the depth of their animosity, we must go back to the early days of their careers and the events that set the stage for their bitter rivalry. It all began in the late 1990s, when both 50 Cent, born Curtis Jackson, and Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy, were rising stars in the rap game. Diddy had already made a name for himself as the founder of Bad Boy Records, a label that boasted artists like the notorious Big and Maze. Meanwhile, 50 Cent was making waves on the underground scene with his mixtapes and raw lyrical style. But in the early 2000s, their paths would cross in a way that would forever change the course of their relationship. Diddy, always the savvy businessman, saw potential in 50 Cent and signed him to his label. It seemed like a match made in hip-hop heaven, with Diddy's industry connections and 50 Cent's raw talent. However, their partnership was short-lived and marred by controversy. In 2000, 50 Cent was infamously shot nine times outside his grandmother's house in Queens, New York. The incident left him hospitalized and fighting for his life. While he was recovering, tensions between 50 Cent and Diddy began to rise. Rumors swirled that Diddy had not done enough to protect 50 Cent or seek justice for the attack. Some even speculated that Diddy may have been involved in the shooting. Though never proven, these allegations created a rift between the two artists that would only deepen over time. As 50 Cent's star continued to rise, fueled by the success of his debut album, Get Rich or Die Tryin', he became increasingly vocal about his grievances with Diddy. In interviews and on social media, he accused Diddy of being a manipulative and opportunistic figure in the industry. He claimed that Diddy had taken advantage of him during their brief partnership and had not supported him when he needed it most. On the other hand, Diddy maintained a more diplomatic stance, choosing not to engage in public feuds with 50 Cent. He focused on his own ventures, expanding his empire with the launch of Sean John clothing and his own music career. But behind the scenes, the tension between the two artists continued to simmer. The turn Turning point came in 2019 when Gina Hewen, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, made shocking allegations of physical abuse against him. In a candid interview with controversial blogger Tasha Kay, Hewen claimed that Diddy had stomped on her stomach, punched her in the head, and dragged her by her hair during their five-year relationship. These allegations sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community and cast a dark cloud over Diddy's reputation. It was during this time that 50 Cent seized the opportunity to publicly criticize Diddy and show support for the victims of sexual assault and rape. He used his platform to shed light on Huin's allegations and called for accountability. This further fueled the flames of their feud, with 50 Cent becoming a vocal advocate for justice and transparency. In a brewing storm, 50 Cent is also set to expose the alleged abuse inflicted by Sean Diddy Combs on his ex-girlfriend Cassie in a forthcoming documentary, as reported by Page Six. The animosity between the two long-standing rivals has escalated, with Jackson, the owner of G-Unit Films and Television, responsible for producing the hit series Power and the true crime documentary hip-hop homicides. Diddy vehemently denies all accusations from Cassie, his former artist and ex-girlfriend, with the legal matter settled within 24 hours. 50 Cent, not one to shy away from controversy, took to Twitter to hint at his involvement in the documentary, sharing a screenshot of the Page Six headline. The feud between Diddy and 50 Cent has been reignited, with the latter relentlessly seeking to undermine Diddy's reputation. Jackson's recent critique even delves into questioning Diddy's sexual orientation, intensifying the public spat. As the documentary unfolds, it promises to shed light on the alleged abuses suffered by Cassie, further fueling the fire in the ongoing clash between these hip-hop heavyweights. For 50 Cent, the feud has been a double-edged sword. On one hand, it has solidified his reputation as a fearless and outspoken figure in the industry. His vocal support for the victims of sexual assault and his relentless criticism of Diddy have garnered him a loyal following and elevated his status as a champion for justice. He has used his platform to shed light on the darker side of the music industry and has become a voice for those who have been silenced. However, the feud has also had its drawbacks for 50 Cent. His relentless attacks on Diddy have sometimes overshadowed his own music and artistic endeavors. Critics argue that he has become more known for his feuds and controversies than for his music. Despite this, 50 Cent remains unapologetic, believing that his role as a truth-teller and advocate for justice is more important than his own personal success. Death of Coolio Coolio is a name that resonates with the golden era of hip-hop. Born artist Leon Ivey Jr. on August 
1963, in Monason, Pennsylvania, Coolio's journey to stardom began in the streets of Compton, California. Growing up in a neighborhood plagued by violence and poverty, Coolio found solace in music. He started his career as a member of the gangsta rap group WC and the Mod Circle, honing his skills and paving the way for his solo success. But as a solo artist, Coolio truly made his mark on the music industry. In 1994, he released his debut album, It Takes a Thief, which showcased his unique style and lyrical prowess. The album's opening track, Fantastic Voyage, became an instant hit, reaching number three on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Coolio's infectious energy and catchy hooks captivated audiences, propelling him into the mainstream. Just a year later, Coolio achieved unparalleled success with his iconic single, Gangsta's Paradise. The song, featured in the film Dangerous Minds, struck a chord with listeners worldwide, earning Coolio a number one spot on the solo rap charts. The impact of Gangsta's Paradise extended far beyond the charts. Its thought-provoking lyrics shed light on the struggles of inner-city life, resonating with a generation hungry for social commentary. Coolio's ability to address important issues through his music earned him critical acclaim and respect from his peers. In 1996, he received six Grammy Award nominations, ultimately winning the Best Rap Solo Performance Award for Gangsta's Paradise. Coolio's success continued to soar as he released more albums, each showcasing his versatility as an artist. From the infectious party anthem 1, 2, 3, 4, something new, to the introspective CU. When you get there, Coolio proved time and time again that he was a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. Beyond his music, Coolio also made a name for himself in the world of television. He hosted the online cooking show Cookin' with Coolio, where he showcased his culinary skills and infectious personality. Coolio's larger-than-life persona and natural charisma made him a sought-after guest on various reality shows, including Coolio's Rules and Celebrity Big Brother. His appearances allowed fans to see a different side of the rapper, further solidifying his place in popular culture. Coolio's impact on hip-hop and popular culture cannot be overstated. His unique style, thought-provoking lyrics, and ability to connect with audiences made him a true icon of his time. Today, we remember Coolio not only for his chart-topping hits, but also for his contributions to the music industry as a whole. The death of Coolio sent shockwaves through the music industry and his fans around the world. But as the news broke, whispers of a darker truth began to circulate. Rumors started to surface, suggesting that Coolio's untimely demise was not a mere accident, but rather a calculated move orchestrated by the elusive secret society known as the Illuminati. And at the center of it all, a name that sent chills down the spines of many, Diddy. The Illuminati, a secret society rumored to control world events has always been shrouded in mystery and speculation. But the latest theory takes the cake, the alleged sacrifice of none other than the 90s rap icon, Coolio. And Jay-Z, a possible Illuminati member, is implicated in the sinister plan. But why Coolio? What evidence supports this wild claim? According to TMZ, Coolio was at a friend's house in Los Angeles on that fateful day. He entered the bathroom and never returned. Concerned, his friend went to check on him, only to find Coolio lying lifeless on the floor. Paramedics were called, but it was too late. The rapper was pronounced dead at the scene. The official cause of Coolio's death has not yet been announced, but speculations run rampant. Some believe he may have suffered a cardiac arrest, while others suspect foul play. But what if there's more to the story? Coolio, known for his outspoken nature, had recently made claims that he was going to expose the dark underbelly of the music industry. He spoke of seeing things that would get him killed. Was he on to something? Did he stumble upon a truth that powerful forces wanted to keep hidden? In one of his last videos before his death, Coolio left fans with many unanswered questions. He hinted at something being obviously wrong, something he saw that was deeply troubling. But what was it? And could this have prompted the Illuminati elites to send their elusive hitmen after him? The truth is hard to discern, but one thing is clear. Coolio's death raises suspicions. Back in April, he broke the Illuminati taboo by exposing crude sex acts he was asked to perform. He declined, but now he's suddenly gone. Coincidence? Many think not. Coolio's claims of being threatened and watched only add fuel to the fire. He received strange messages and emails, leaving him with a constant feeling of being monitored. He even took a break from everything to see if it was all in his head, but the strange occurrences stopped when he did. Could it be that he was onto something? Coolio's fearlessness in the face of death was well known. He had no fear of dying, but he did fear for his family's safety. He knew that speaking out against powerful forces could put them in danger. And now, with his passing, fans and supporters worry about the safety of his loved ones. The death of Coolio has left a void in the music industry and in the hearts of his fans. But it has also sparked a renewed interest in the truth. People are starting to question the narrative and demand answers. They believe there's something more to Coolio's death, something that needs to come to the surface. Death of Notorious Big, another death that sent shockwaves through the music industry and left fans mourning the loss of a talented artist, was Notorious Big. But what role did Diddy, also known as Sean Combs, play in the events leading up to Biggie's tragic demise? 
Diddy was not only Biggie's mentor, but also a close friend. Their relationship was a complex one, filled with both loyalty and tension. As the head of a successful record label, Diddy significantly influenced Biggie's career and played a pivotal role in shaping his image and music. However, as Biggie's star continued to rise, tensions began to mount between the two. Some speculate that Diddy's desire for control and financial gain led to a strained relationship with the rapper. Rumors of disputes over royalties and publishing rights circulated, adding fuel to the fire. The night of March 9, 1997, would forever be etched in the annals of hip-hop history as the night the rap world lost one of its brightest stars. But what events led up to Biggie's tragic murder, and who was responsible for pulling the trigger? The evening began with Biggie attending a Soul Train Awards after-party at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Surrounded by his entourage and under the watchful eye of his bodyguards, Biggie seemed to be enjoying the festivities. Little did he know that this would be his last night on Earth. As the party came to a close, Biggie and his crew made their way to their GMC Suburban, parked near the museum. It was at this moment that tragedy struck. A black Chevy Impala pulled up alongside Biggie's vehicle at a red light, and the driver opened fire, showering the Suburban with bullets. The chaos and panic that ensued were captured in the memories of those who were present that night. Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, rushed to Biggie's aid, desperately trying to pull him out of the vehicle. But it was too late. Biggie had sustained fatal gunshot wounds and succumbed to his injuries at the scene. The identity of Biggie's killer remains a mystery to this day, shrouded in speculation speculation and conspiracy theories. One prevailing theory suggests that the East Coast-West Coast rivalry played a significant role in his murder. Many believe that Biggie's death was a direct retaliation for the killing of Tupac Shakur, his West Coast counterpart. According to this theory, the shooter was a member of a rival gang associated with Tupac. The motive behind the attack was to avenge Tupac's death and escalate the ongoing feud between the East and West Coast rap scenes. This theory gained traction due to the timing and the similarities between the two murders. However, there are are those who believe that the East Coast-West Coast rivalry was merely a smokescreen, diverting attention from the true culprits. Some speculate that Biggie's murder was an inside job orchestrated by individuals within the music industry who had a vested interest in silencing him. One theory suggests that the record labels involved in the East Coast-West Coast feud may have played a role in Biggie's death. This alleged conspiracy aimed to eliminate the competition and solidify their dominance in the rap industry. While these claims remain unsubstantiated, they continue to fuel speculation and intrigue. Another theory points to the involvement of corrupt law enforcement officials in Biggie's murder. It is alleged that certain individuals within the police force had ties to the criminal underworld and used their positions to orchestrate the attack. This theory gained traction due to the perceived lack of progress in the investigation and the alleged cover-up surrounding the case. Despite numerous investigations and the passage of time, the identity of Biggie's killer remains elusive. The lack of concrete evidence and the complexity of the case have hindered the pursuit of justice. Theories continue to circulate, and the search for answers persists. However, there is one controversial aspect of Diddy's involvement in Biggie's death, and the theory that he may have had prior knowledge of the planned attack. Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, has made shocking claims that Diddy knew something was going to happen that night, but failed to take adequate measures to protect Biggie. Deal's allegations raise questions about Diddy's motives, and whether he could have done more to prevent the tragedy. Did he prioritize his own safety over that of his artist, or was he simply unaware of the imminent danger? Some believe that Diddy's involvement Involvement in the East Coast-West Coast feud may have played a role in Biggie's murder. The theory suggests that Diddy, in an attempt to protect his own reputation and maintain his standing in the industry, may have had a hand in orchestrating the attack on Biggie. However, it is important to note that these allegations remain speculative and have not been proven in a court of law. Diddy has vehemently denied any involvement in Biggie's death and maintains his innocence. The tragic death of Notorious Big sent shockwaves through the music industry and left a void that could never be filled. In the wake of Biggie's death, the rap industry underwent a period of reflection and soul-searching. The East Coast-West Coast feud that had fueled so much animosity and violence began to lose its grip on the collective consciousness. The tragic loss of two of its brightest stars, Biggie and Tupac Shakur, served as a wake-up call, forcing the industry to confront the consequences of its divisions. Biggie's legacy extends far beyond his tragic death. His impact on the rap genre and popular culture as a whole is immeasurable. His debut album, Ready to Die, is widely regarded as one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. It showcased Biggie's storytelling abilities, raw talent, and unparalleled lyrical skills. The success of Ready to Die catapulted Biggie into superstardom and he continued to dominate the charts with subsequent releases. His ability to effortlessly switch between gritty street narratives and introspective storytelling set him apart from his peers. Biggie's music resonated with listeners from all walks of life, transcending boundaries and leaving an indelible mark on the rap landscape. Beyond his musical contributions, Biggie's larger-than-life persona and charismatic presence 
made him an icon in popular culture. His distinctive style, from his trademark crown to his larger-than-life personality, solidified his status as a cultural icon. Biggie's influence extended beyond music, shaping fashion trends, slang, and the overall aesthetic of the hip-hop community. Even in death, Biggie's music continues to resonate with audiences. His posthumous releases, including the critically acclaimed Life After Death album, further cemented his legacy and showcased his versatility as an artist. The timeless quality of his music ensures that his impact will be felt for generations to come beef with Mace. In the world of hip-hop, feuds and beefs are no strangers, but few have lasted as long and been as explosive as the ongoing feud between Sean Diddy Combs and the rapper Mace. This beef, which has been simmering for over two decades, has its roots in a series of events that unfolded in the late 1990s. It all began in 1999, when Mace, a rising star signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Records, shocked the music industry by announcing his retirement from music. Mace, whose real name is Mason Bitha, cited his newfound passion for ministry as the reason behind his decision. He wanted to focus on his spiritual journey and leave behind the glitz and glamour of the rap world. At the time, Bad Boy Records was at the height of its success, thanks in large part to the Notorious Big, another artist signed to the label. But tragedy struck in 1997 when the Notorious Big was tragically killed in a drive-by shooting. This event profoundly impacted Mace, who was not only a label mate but also a close friend of the late rapper. The loss of the Notorious Big and the subsequent legal issues that plagued Bad Boy Records took a toll on Mace, leading him to question his place in the music industry. Mace's retirement left Diddy and Bad Boy Records in a difficult position. They had lost one of their most promising artists, and the label was facing mounting legal troubles. But little did they know that this retirement would be the catalyst for a feud that would define their relationship for years to come. Fast forward to 2004, and Mace made a surprising comeback with the release of his album, Welcome Back. The album, however, failed to live up to the success of his previous releases, Harlem World and Double Up. This disappointment may have been a blow to Mace's ego, but it also reignited tensions between him and Diddy. In 2009, the feud took a dramatic turn when Mace crashed Diddy's live radio interview with V103's Ryan Cameron. Armed with documents, Mace demanded to be released from his bad boy contract, claiming that he had fulfilled his obligations and should be allowed to pursue his music career independently. Diddy, seemingly caught off guard, signed the documents, but it soon became clear that this was not the end of their dispute. It was later revealed that the documents only allowed Mace to appear as a featured artist on other rappers' songs. He was still contractually obligated to Bad Boy Records, and the label retained the publishing rights to all of Mace's music. This revelation further fueled Mace's frustration and resentment towards Diddy. In 2012, Mace took to social media to express his grievances with Diddy. In a now-deleted Instagram post, he accused Diddy of refusing to sell him the publishing rights to his three albums despite Mace offering $2 million against his original $20,000 advance from 1996. The post also alleged that Diddy had sabotaged Mace's set at the Lovers and Friends Festival, a claim that added another layer of animosity to their already strained relationship. Diddy and Mace have taken public shots at each other over the years. In 2020, Mace again took to Instagram to vent his frustrations, claiming that Diddy still owed him money and refused to sell his publishing rights back. Diddy, in response, labeled Mace a fake pastor and asserted that Mace still owed the label a $3 million album advance for a project that he never delivered. Despite the heated exchanges, there have been moments of reconciliation between the two. In September of 2023, Diddy claimed that he and Mace had made up, stating that they were brothers who sometimes fought but ultimately loved each other. However, given the history of their beef, it remains to be seen if this reconciliation will last or if the feud will reignite once again. Diddy's abuse against Cassie in recent months, the music industry has been rocked by shocking allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. The lawsuits filed by four brave women have exposed a dark side of Diddy's empire, accusing him of sexual abuse and trafficking. These allegations, centered around his relationship with singer Cassie, have ignited a long overdue reckoning in the music industry. Once an influential executive and gatekeeper, Diddy now faces public scrutiny and comparisons to other high-profile cases. In November, singer Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, filed a groundbreaking lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs, accusing him of a series of horrifying acts of abuse and exploitation. The lawsuit, which sent shockwaves through the music industry, detailed the alleged abuse that Cassie endured throughout her relationship with Diddy. According to the lawsuit, the abuse began shortly after Cassie signed with Diddy's label, Bad Boy Records, in 2005. Cassie claimed that Diddy used his position of power and influence to control and manipulate her, subjecting her to physical violence, sexual assault, and sex trafficking. One of the most disturbing allegations made by Cassie 
was that Diddy coerced her into engaging in sexual acts with male sex workers while he filmed the encounters. Cassie stated that she felt trapped and powerless, forced to comply with Diddy's demands under the threat of damaging her music career. The lawsuit also detailed instances of physical abuse, with Cassie alleging that Diddy repeatedly beat her, including one incident in 2009 where he kicked her in the face, causing her to require a week of recovery. These acts of violence left Cassie in a constant state of fear and anxiety, unsure of when the next outburst would occur. Furthermore, Cassie claimed that Diddy raped her on multiple occasions, including a particularly traumatic incident in 2018. She described how Diddy broke into her house after she attempted to leave the relationship, assaulting her and leaving her traumatized. In addition to the physical and sexual abuse, Cassie alleged that Diddy engaged in sex trafficking, coercing her into having sex with other men while he watched and masturbated. She stated that Diddy would often film these encounters without her consent, maintaining control over the explicit material and using it as a means of further manipulation. Cassie's lawsuit also shed light on the extent of Diddy's control over her personal life. She claimed that he monitored her every move, dictating who she could see when she could, see them, and even controlling access to her own medical information. Cassie felt trapped and isolated, unable to escape the cycle of abuse. The lawsuit further revealed the lengths to which Diddy and his associates allegedly went to silence Cassie and maintain their power over her. Cassie stated that Diddy and his employees threatened to damage her music career if she spoke out against him, leaving her feeling trapped and unable to seek help. The lawsuits filed against Diddy have sent shockwaves through the music industry, prompting a long overdue reckoning with the abuse of power and the treatment of artists within the industry. The allegations against Diddy have exposed a dark underbelly that many feel has been ignored for far too long. Diddy, once an influential executive and gatekeeper in the music industry, now finds himself at the center of a storm of controversy. The allegations made by Cassie and the other women have forced the industry to confront its complicity in enabling and protecting powerful figures accused of abuse. One of the most significant impacts of these lawsuits has been the severing of ties between Diddy and various brands and institutions. Diageo, the beverage brand that partnered with Diddy on vodka and tequila, swiftly removed his image from its website, signaling a clear stance against the alleged abuse. Capital Preparatory Schools, a New York charter school network that Diddy helped expand, publicly announced its decision to cut ties with him, although the statement was later removed. Diddy also stepped aside as chair of Revolt, a TV network he co-founded, further indicating the growing distance between him and the industry. The lawsuits against Diddy have also reignited the conversation around the Me Too movement and its impact on the music industry. While the movement brought about significant changes in other sectors, the music industry seemed to remain largely untouched. The allegations against Diddy and the comparisons drawn to other high-profile cases, such as R. Kelly, have highlighted the need for a comprehensive reckoning within the industry. The Me Too movement has shown that survivors of abuse can no longer be silenced or ignored. The bravery of Cassie and the other women who have come forward has paved the way for others to share their stories and seek justice. Diddy's pattern of abuse against his exes. Diddy's turbulent romantic relationships extend beyond the controversy with Cassie, as the EO. Hip-hop mogul has found himself entangled in allegations of abuse with other exes as well. Disturbing claims have been made by one of his ex-partners, Gina Hewen, also known as Virginia Feb. These allegations have resurfaced in light of the recent bombshell lawsuit filed by Cassie against Diddy. In a 2019 interview with controversial blogger Tasha Kay, Gina Hewen made shocking allegations against Diddy, claiming that he subjected her to physical abuse throughout their relationship. According to Hewen, the abuse reached a horrifying climax when Diddy stomped on her stomach, leaving her breathless and in excruciating pain. She described the incident, saying, He stomped on my stomach really hard, like took the wind out of my breath. I couldn't breathe. He kept hitting me. I was pleading to him, Can you just stop? I can't breathe. The violence didn't stop there. Hein further claimed that Diddy grabbed her by the hair and repeatedly punched the back of her head. The relentless assault left her traumatized and desperate for it to end. Eventually, she found the strength to fight back, realizing that she had enough of his it is truly disturbing to think that someone with such fame and power could inflict such pain on another person. Hewing's relationship with Diddy began during a tumultuous period when he was on again and off again with Cassie. According to Huen, Diddy's abuse was not limited to physical violence. She revealed that he subjected her to mental and emotional abuse as well. Diddy would constantly compare her to Cassie, telling her that she was the bad and Cassie was the good. This manipulation and constant comparison left Huen feeling inferior and trapped in a toxic relationship. What makes these allegations even more more disturbing is the claim that those around Diddy, including his inner circle, were aware of the abuse but did nothing to intervene. Hewing stated that everyone allowed the alleged abuse to occur, enabling Diddy's behavior to continue unchecked. T. His raises questions about the culture surrounding Diddy and the extent to which his power and influence shielded him from accountability. In addition to the physical and emotional abuse, Hewing made another shocking revelation. She alleged that Diddy offered
offered her $5,000 to abort their baby when she became pregnant. This offer highlights the callous disregard Diddy had for the well-being of his partner and unborn child. Hyoin turned down the money, driven by her love for him and a desire to prove her loyalty. It is deeply troubling to think that someone would prioritize their own desires over the well-being of their partner and potential child. It is important to note that these are allegations and have not been proven in a court of law. However, the details shared by Gina Huyn paint a disturbing picture of a relationship marred by abuse and manipulation. The resurfacing of these allegations in light of Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy raises further questions about his conduct and the potential patterns of behavior that may exist. Diddy's image, once synonymous with success and influence, now stands stained by a troubling track record of alleged abuse and exploitation. In this ongoing saga, 50 Cent remains a vocal critic, ensuring that Diddy's alleged transgressions are not forgotten or overlooked. This was all from our side. Thank you for staying with us. If you enjoy our content, our newest videos are just a click away.